What's going on guys? Dallas here at Non-Typical and today I want to talk to you about how I got this giant decapitating broadhead to fly like a field point. So if you want to figure out how to get your decapitating broadhead to fly straight this season so you can schlock a Tom Gobby and put him in the dirt, stay tuned. I'll go through each step and figure out which vein configuration worked best for me. Thanks for tuning in. Alright guys, so like I was saying, I'll be breaking down my setup as far as uh, what I'm going to be shooting or trying to get to fly straight for decapitating broadhead, my setup, and everything that goes into it. Um, so first thing is you're going to want a super stiff arrow because you're going to be trying to shoot one of these giant broadheads right here. Mine's a three blade. Um, the one I was using is a uh, turkey decap by Solid Broadhead Company. Um, and guys, last year I went through this whole process and I could get it to fly straight till like 18 yards. And then after that, I don't know where it was going. Um, I mean, as you can see, this broad had lost a blade. Um, this one right here lost an insert. This one, the knock busted out. I mean, I definitely put it through the ringer last year trying to get this straight. Basically, what you're going to do is first try to figure out what veins you're going to use. Um, last year, I went off the video that Josh Bomar made uh, with Bomar Archery. I'm sure um, some of you guys have seen that, but he did the six fletch and he used the AE Max like you see here. I just still couldn't get that to fly straight. I did everything um, that he said in his tuning process. I'm sure, I mean, he knows way more than me about archery. He's been doing it forever. I'm not knocking him at all. I just couldn't get it to work for me. I, um, he was shooting a Hoyt Ultra, I believe, in that video. So you have a little bit longer axle axle, a bigger platform. Um, last year I was shooting the 31 and a half VXR. So that could have had some play into it. I mean, we're also different body types, uh, longer draw length for him. Obviously, he's a giant mammal. So um, there is a little bit of difference. But I'm going to start out this year with trying something like this. So it's actually eight veins. So you have um, the reason I did a blazer in the back and then these AE hybrids is because if I did an AE Max in the back and then an AE hybrid up front, what you're going to get is you're not going to be able to put this rest up without it hitting. So, sorry, let me turn that around. So if I were to do like an AE Max and then the hybrid, it would be like way up here and you wouldn't have clearance for the rest. So I ended up doing the blazer and then the hybrid as you can see and I did a four fletch on the back and then kind of just jerry-rigged the, the jig to get it to where um, that hybrid was sitting directly in the middle and I went, I would say about five eighths of an inch in towards the blazers um, with the start of that AE hybrid and that's how I did that. Um, so I want to start with that. As far as tuning it, um, you want to tune it with a bear shaft. So the way to do that is to mimic the weight of these veins, you're going to have to wrap your air in electric tape. These are my airs from last year, so this weight's going to be a little different. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so. I'm looking at 49 grains. Um, I don't know if you can see that. 49 grains for all eight of those veins right there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some electrical tape. Bam. I'm gonna take my full length shaft. I'm using the Black Eagle Rampage. Uh, they are 250 spine. Uh, so super stiff, but they're also not super heavy, um, so they're fairly light. So I'm going to need to wrap this 49 grains worth of electrical tape. So you're going to take this arrow, you're going to measure it, 429 grains. 49 plus 429 equals 478 is where I'm going to need to be sitting once I put the electrical tape on this arrow. 
And I'm going to start roughly like where my veins start. Um, because you want it to be in the same spot. For the most part, I'm sure it's not a, that big of a difference. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's definitely going to help. 478 on the dot. That was lucky. Um, yep, cool. So that's what you're going to do from there. Uh, and then obviously, so this is a 200 grain broadhead that, that company makes. So you're going to want to be shooting a 200 grain field point, obviously. Um, so from here, after you figure out exactly how much your veins weigh, you're going to want to wrap it in electrical tape to make it mimic the weight of the veins so we can get the bare shaft tuning process going. Um, you kind of got to know what veins you're going to be shooting before you do this because um, you're going to have to get the weight of how much, you're going to have to understand how much electrical tape to put on there. Uh, to get that figured out, it's kind of just troubleshooting. I mean, like I said last year, I did what Josh Bomar said and did the six fletch AA, AAE um, max veins. It just didn't work for me. So um, you might have to do a little extra leg work, break couple arrows, couple broadheads, um, but I could wrap this and it could not even work what I configured. I just did some crazy vein configuration because it's eight fletch, eight veins, and I figured maybe it would do something different. So we're going to try it out and see what it does, um, but stay tuned and, and stay along for the ride. All right, guys, so after you have wrapped your arrow in electrical tape to mimic the weight of the veins that you're going to be using, you're going to want to bear shaft tune this. Uh, to get it to tune properly. So what you'll do is start at 10 yards and then you'll end up working your way back to 30. So um, the further you get back, the more uh, that moving your rest is gonna affect the shot um, or your tune. So start at 10 yards and when you shoot this, uh, your air is gonna kick and say it kicks like this, you're gonna wanna end up moving your rest to the left to bring it back. You're gonna wanna get this arrow shooting perfectly straight in the end. That's the goal. So um, start at 10 yards, try to work your way. Once you get it at 10, back back up to 20 yards. Um, shoot it at 20, your arrows magnify as you back up. So you could be perfectly at 10, then you get to 20, it could be like this, then 30, it could be like that. So just slowly back up. Once you're good at 20, back up to 30. Um, once you're good at 30, you're good to go. We'll slap veins on. Um, and then we'll start shooting the broadheads and I'll walk you through that process of what you actually should be shooting these broadheads in because don't shoot them in a real target, you'll mess them up. After you do get your bow tuned, you're gonna wanna make sure that you at least sight it in close with the field point uh, to try to get an idea where it's gonna hit. Another thing guys, when you're shooting this, full length shafts um, are working, have worked better for me when I experimented with it. Also, the lower poundage, I think I'm at 59 right now. Also, watch where these blades are coming up when you draw back so it doesn't hit your sight um, and whatnot. Especially if you do cut them down to try them shorter, that's also a, a big deal. Make sure it doesn't come back and hit your hand. So I'm using full length shafts. We'll see how it works and go from there. Also, the last thing is if you're, um, I didn't go over bear shaft tuning, if you're hitting real high like this or hitting real low like that, you're going to want to move that arrow accordingly or your rest accordingly to get that arrow to come back straight as well um, as the left and right. Hit a little high, that's okay, we'll, we'll kind of tune, um, try to get a groove first, obviously you can't groove with these broadheads, but shoot one after the other. Hopefully it looked like it fly, flew super straight, so I'm going to back up and see what that does. Alright guys, so this is right at 20 yards. So same spot, just a little bit high again, so I'm gonna move that accordingly. Just a little bit right. Um, they've all been a tad to the right. So I'm gonna shift it, and on this next target, I'm actually gonna aim a little bit lower because I'm already wearing out that part of the pillow. And I know what it's like to go through these broadheads because I did last year. It's not fun.
that one was money. Put the dark spot on there, right in the middle. Change my sight to the right a little bit, and bam. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video helps you get your decapitating broadhead flying straight, just like a field point. Like I said, what worked for me was the four blazers in the back, the four AE hybrids up front. I did try pretty much every configuration out there, the six AE Max, six feathers, uh, six of the Bronco Bonings, big fletchings. Um, I did three AE Max and three trad veins and then three uh, Boning Broncos and three trad veins. None of it seemed to work for me, um, but like I said, we're all different, all have different draw lengths and whatnot. But guys, give this a try if you're having trouble tuning your decapitating broadhead. This was the ticket for me. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, share this video. Appreciate the support.